thanks for taking the time it's to begin pleasure. with. Thank you. Uh, the new album is called Homage. And uh, for those who might not know it already, it's this album is a uh, homage to to whom or to what? It's just a sound and a, an era, really. It's, I mean, it's an homage to disco, mm. and it's not a pastiche. It's not trying to sound like. It's actually recreating an actual sound, mm. and we try to try to be as true to the process as possible. Mm. And that was a, that was a great experience. That was really good fun. It's all live, it's all acoustic. Mm. You know, I think there's one one synthesizer on it, but that's from it's actually a nineteen seventies string it's called a Mellotron yeah. like string machine. And it's the same sound that you would have heard on um I think it's Donna Summer's Love to Love You Baby. So it's really it's so synthetic, but it's mm. great, it's it's mm. it's it's a, it's a special sound. Yeah, like when people think about disco, they, they think about synthesizers and <coughs> electronic sounds. And on this album, it's it's more organic. It's a more organic sound. To it. Like you've got your full on chorus and you've got your horns. Or oh yeah, it's, got, it's strings, <coughs> horns, bass, guitar, drums, percussion, back and vocals. It's got it's got everything mm. that made disco what it was. Yeah, so it's just a whole organic process. So you're saying that uh, the, the whole organic thing uh, was disco for you? Yeah, definitely, because that was before you had the technologies of MIDI or sync or mm. even computerised desks and mm. that kind of stuff. So it was all kind of, it was all, it all had to be done more about a feeling mm. and intuition. Yeah. And, that's, and that was a great process because during that process, everyone who came on board and everyone who got involved suddenly got very excited because it was something they hadn't done before. Especially the back and vocalists who are quite young. Mm. And for everyone who knows I usually work with Matthew and Gillian. Yeah. So I didn't use Matthew and Gillian on this <coughs> and because I needed to have a sound which was very specific to mm. what I heard in my head. And it was about younger women creating a, a very unified sound and these women they work with each other quite mm. a lot they actually yeah. are called the the faithettes and yeah it's Palo they paloma faith and the backing vocals yeah mm. so they're the backing yeah. vocalists for paloma faith mm. and they brought an amazing sound to it. and they got very very excited because they had never they've never done something where the vocals have been so part of i mean because the way it sounds it needs all these layers of backing vocals, and mm. so they got very excited about that. Mm. So then there's, a lot, there's lots of strings, lots of horns. And you can really hear that, yeah. Yeah, you can really hear it. Really nice. And the backing vocals need to be loud, so it's not just mm. about me singing, it's about it's about making a choral mm -hmm. kind of um, feel, um, feeling. So, mm. And so they were so excited by that. Mm. And it was really nice to watch. You're, you're talking about people, all, everyone who came on board really enjoyed it. Yeah. Uh, you worked with John Winfield, he's a yeah. producer. Yeah. You've worked with him before. Yeah. Obviously, it's fun working with this guy again. Yeah, well, I know John. Project. I've known John for a long, long time. John is the husband of my friend Caroline, but I've known John for, oh my goodness, 20 years. Mm. And John's a great, great musician and he's, he's really got a good ear. but. And we've done stuff, we've done some of the EPs together, you know, like, and so we've done all the EPs. And then we were actually working on a new EP, and it was the same kind of approach. It was computerised, electronic, it was a mixture of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, gosh, it'd be great to do, like, a, a disco album. And then we took some of the songs from the old EPs. Mm -hmm. And then when we'd done them in a, as a disco, kind of more organic, it's almost as though... The EP songs now were the demos. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. the mm. songs have actually they've actually come come alive. They're actually yeah. that's it's almost as though this is how they were meant to be. Mm. And so that's been a really exciting process. Yeah, because like five of the songs were on EPs already and like we, we were talking about yeah. that. It's like the the kind of like you've experimented with them and it, it's the sound really, really good. I mean the, I think I mean I, I, I personally I I mean it's, it's like you know, people have their own tastes about music and songs and for me this is how the songs should be. I like the other mm. versions, mm. but they were versions. Mm. For me, this is this is how they, they should be. Mm. That's probably fun working on them too. Like it really was because it, it was about it was about under it was about suddenly realizing what could be done with them. Yeah. Mm. Um, also, we uh, on the booklet of the CD you've mentioned is Carolyn Buckley and yeah. and, and, and uh, Sally Herbert uh, from the Banderas. Yeah. 
you've worked with them also a lot before. Well, I've known Caroline and Sally for mm. a long, long time, and mm. Sally was in the Communards, string player. Mm. Caroline, mm. she was doing some vocals on uh, with the Communards, but we've known each other for so long. So, mm. and Sally, on her own right now, is like a a very, very well respected and in demand string arranger. Yeah, yeah. She's a big that, yeah. string arranger. She's mm. done things like Plan B, she done Josephine and the Machine. Mm. She's done a lot of stuff. She's really and she even done you know like this one, she done the album by the priests, you know, this album that was done by mm. and they were just yeah. called The Priests. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah, Sally yeah. done that mm. too. So okay. Okay. She's got an eclectic mix. <laughs> so, is it important for you to to work with friends? Because uh, um, I mean, off, off you would have uh, the likes of Sally or Caroline in, in past productions too. It's just because they are musicians and we know each other, and mm. I know I know what they're capable of, and so that's what makes it easier. Mm, you know what you're getting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Right. Uh, learn to talk strong enough and travesty. Uh, we agree on it that they're our favourites mm. on, on the album. And w w just like you, if you could say a few words about each song, I mean, uh, Travesty is a great song, but what is the travesty in the, in the song? <coughs> the travesty really is just, it's it really based around one lyric, and it is, you know, like, this is a welfare war. It's like, for me, that's my kind of, it's my kind of trying to put a message across about that we are in a, for me, it's quite frustrating because I think I don't think people yet have come to to experience the full effect of the financial crisis that happened, and the fact that lots of countries are now taking measures to cut back budgets. Mm -hmm. And it's really disturbing because you know, like in the UK, the budgets for all sorts of welfare has been cut. Yet we're still, but the government is still determined to spend twenty three billion pounds on a nuclear deterrent yeah. so it's that kind of stuff and for me welfare doesn't just mean about the government paying money to people it's about how we look after each other mm. and there's a new generation who spend their whole time being detached from people because they're walking along the street like this mm. you know and yeah. I'm on my bicycle and I'm constantly shouting at people on yeah, the street because they're walking yeah. into the street going like this mm. you know and you yeah. watch them so yeah. there's a real detachment and when people when we go into a, a, a situation where socially and economically we're vulnerable mm -hmm. people then start to become kind of more insular and so then become less less caring and so that's that's really mm -hmm. what it, what it's about and mm -hmm. then the last verse is about you know there is a there's a generation that can that we have to think about to possibly change stuff so it's it's a there's a lot of idealism in it and there's a kind of you know i have this kind of I wouldn't say it's naive, but I'm optimistic, so I like to try and have an optimistic mm. end to something. I mean, you, 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 you've you been political a yeah. lot, but it seems to be like political at a different level. Well, it's more, it's, it's, it's less, um, it's less in your face. I don't, yeah. I don't involve myself in such um, opinionated um, issues, mm. because I've realised that in only the last few years, I've realised, last, last three or four years, that I always involved myself in things which overwhelmed me. This idea of trying to change the world. So I try. Mm. I now focus on much stuff, stuff closer to home mm. and something small. And really, most of the album is talking about really how I feel from the heart and how I feel emotionally and mm. and how I feel personally about stuff. You know, and strong enough. Strong enough mm. is about a very much a personal journey. Yeah. Because um, and strong enough, I, I kind of I stopped. I stopped drinking like nearly three and a half years ago mm -hmm. and I went into a very a very different frame of mind and realised that for a good period for a good lot of my, my, my life I've been very um I've been very I've been quite quite insular and not, not open enough. Mm -hmm. And so I've been going through a lot of personal stuff and involved myself in some some stuff which has allowed me to to be less um, less insular, mm, and that's mm. been, and that's what's strong enough. And the lyric Sounds says good. about, you know, a bit too long. I was kind of just always doing it my way and yeah. closing off. Mm. Whereas, if you allow yourself to 
if you allow yourself to trust people, mm. then you can actually do something even better and bigger. Yeah. But it's, a, it's about having to take that step, and so yeah. that's really what it's about. Yeah, sounds good. Um, yeah, in strong enough, it was like you, you often sing about your way, and, I, and like I was wondering, what what is the Jimmy Summer of a way? So you've just said it. Well, yeah, that's it. Uh, you know, tired of doing it my way. You know, mm. it's kind of. This idea that yeah. I could solve all my problems, but mm. you know, sometimes you do actually have to ask for help. Mm. That's true. Yeah. Um, Learn to talk is also, I think, is a very personal song. Would, would you agree there? The yeah, and again, that comes from that comes from the same sentiment as mm. strong enough, yeah. and it's about again understanding. It's about understanding that if you allow yourself to open up. And if you connect to your heart and use your heart and your mind mm. working together, mm. then you can actually you can actually be aware and be involved in much more and allow yourself to be vulnerable. Mm. But as long as you trust in the process of support that you have, mm. so that's really that's that really is what it's what it's about, and it's about that idea that I I have found another language I found another mm. way to because I've always been very opinionated and I was always inv involved in mm. very extreme left wing radical politics mm. but at the same time on not realising that what I was actually doing was being very opinionated mm. and quite reactionary in a sense because mm. it was like if you don't do it the way I do it mm. if you don't believe in what I believe in then mm. fuck off it was as simple as that yeah but sometimes something like that is also essential you know? yeah, yeah, it's, yeah but it's about balance yeah, yeah. and it's about mm. understanding where it's right and where it's wrong yeah yeah okay. so you know and I guess I went through a process over the last four years or so that that's kind of mm. starting to understand what I need to do to be more accessible and to to connect to people more mm. and that's really mm. that really is what it's about and again because I feel there is a generation that's going to be a lost generation about how to communicate mm. and how to to really believe to believe in, in themselves and and things around them and other people as well mm. so mm. we're becoming a very fearful and untrusting society I think yeah and mm. that's something that makes me sad but I also again I'm very optimistic so I believe that yeah, that can be that can be challenged mm. Mm. Okay, uh, lights are shining. Also, somewhat. It's a, it's a very inspiring <coughs> song. Also, also, would you say also on the same level as? as it is, and I think talking? for me, all of these songs, a lot of these songs are actually almost as like thirty years have gone by since a really small town boy, and the mm. sentiment of that song was about a journey to mm. find yourself. Mm. And so I think those thirty years, lights again, is about where that journey can take you, mm. and just believing enough and having faith and having belief and courage will allow you to will allow you to stand in the light and to actually realise, you know, that you can you can achieve something mm. and you, but you have to really believe in, in in yourself and you have to believe in the process and you have to believe that you can do something and that you can change something. Mm. But you have to be part of something bigger to do that. Yeah, you know you have to be, be you have to become part of a of a voice, mm. and so you have to look around to find to find a connect find a connection for that, mm. and that's what that's really what it's about. So in a sense, it's my my lyrics really have the same sentiment from the very beginning, mm. always mm. with a ser a sense of searching and optimism. This is learned to talk. Say